right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over this email that was sent from a subscriber. This story, as you can see by the time, who's in his 60s. And he shares his whole adventures, starting from childhood up until his 60s now, about many of the things he's learned along the way that backs up pretty much everything I've been saying on this channel since I started. He, he starts the story off when he was young and leading up to all these lessons. He's learned 27 lessons, in fact, everything from washing off her red flags, don't get married when you're in the military, all these different types of things. I thought it'd be a great one to go over here that really will show you guys, guys you, that you really like the longer stories, life stories of different guys to see how things go in their lives and how their actions affect, you know, how things go and all the things he's learned here. And this guy, let me tell you, this guy was quite the Chatter Tyrone type in his early years and does a lot of things I disagree with. But as I always say, karma is a B-I-T-C-H, and believe me, he gets his karma down the road and learns. And so there's a lot of things in this story that you'll learn, you know, it backs up what I say as well as what not to do and all that. And, and, and he's doing well now in his 60s, but believe me, it was quite the journey. So again, if you guys like the long stories, these life stories here, you'll definitely appreciate this one. He says, uh, my name is Pete. Names in this story have been changed to protect the innocent and the guilty. And I've been listening to you for about a year and a half now, and I do love your work. I'm in my mid-60s, and I thought I would share my life experiences that confirms everything that you say. It is important that you have some background on my beginnings. I grew up in a very, very, very small Midwestern town in the middle of nowhere. This was a closed community where everyone knew each other and most likely were related in some fashion. My father was a drunk who worked in a factory, and my mother was, a, was present... But her mind was somewhere in a trashy romance novel or soap opera. In the 19, in the 60s, in the 60s, folks stayed out of their fo other folks' business. I had four siblings, and my father would come home from work drunk and pick some someone to harm, uh, including me and my siblings. And we were never very close because most of the time was spent trying to throw each other under the bus so they wouldn't get hurt. That stereotype is just you hear that all the time. That is so terrible. Your father was a piece of fucking shit. And I don't care about his childhood or anything like that. He was a grown-ass adult and made the choice to be a drunk and take his BS on people that couldn't fight back. That guy deserved a major ass whooping. When I was three years old, my father br broke my arm. Oh, my God. And I spent the summer in a cast. Again, it was the early 60s and hospitals did not meddle in family issues. I didn't think my dad intended to, to starve us, but beer, cigarettes, and Pepsi for my mother were always top priority. If there was money left over, we, we would get food. Otherwise, my siblings and I were on our own. This created a lot of mental and emotional issues for us. We were never very close until just a couple of years ago, and none of us knew much about the other's life. I personally do struggle with the, with the lack of guilt, and I don't have the fight or flight response. Just the fight response. I uh, had to steal money and food growing up and justified it by surviving. In fact, my siblings and I say in a joking way that we didn't have a childhood, we had a survival training. Yeah, and I bet your dad in some effed up way thought he was doing you a favor. Preparing you for the tough world. Yeah, thanks dad for breaking my arm. Send me to the hospital. You're a wonderful dad. So jumping forward to six years old, there's a reason he's given a background here, guys. I did not know what school was, and suddenly I had to sit at a desk in a room full of kids I had never met and was expected to be silent and sit still. Having ADD, it was quite a challenge, coupled with the fact that I am a I am colorblind. They did not test for that back then, so my first year of school was somewhat traumatic. I really didn't make any friends and was considered the dumb kid. In the 1960s, the dumb kid got left behind, and they didn't bring that they didn't bring down the rest of the class to their dumb kids level. I ever heard my first grade teacher tell another teacher I was dumb, the dumb kid because I couldn't read, do math, or learn my colors. Yeah, but, you know, you, all that family trauma going on, it certainly would get in the way of you being able to, have, be able to pay attention and learn anything. You were probably always alert to make sure your dad wasn't coming around and taking it out on you. I ever heard my first grade teacher tell another teacher I was I wrote that part. I was short, skinny, with goofy glasses, so I was clearly the target for the bullies, and just about everyone was. I got into a lot of fights and a lot of whacks from my teacher. I taught myself how to read by the sixth grade. In high school, I had a reputation for being a rather good athlete. I played football and ran track and field. I still have a good track and field record that stands to this day. Probably from running away from your dad. 
I began earning a little respect and some attention from the ladies. Because of my past, I was socially awkward and really got no direction from my parents, so I staggered through school, and the best I got with the ladies was third base a couple of times. Well, let's be honest, most guys weren't exactly James Bond, if you were, well, in high school. So that's pretty much where most guys were by the time they got out of high school. Some of us visited a guy in a nearby town named Chuck, who was a 30-something, was a sanitation worker and lived with his parents. Chuck had one of the original 800-pound VCRs and an amazing PORN video collection. We would go there and watch PORN and crack jokes like Mystery Science Theater. The only thing I knew about SCX was for these videos. This comes into play later. So who's this dude that you're just going to his house and watching these videos with? That's disturbing, but okay, I'll just keep on with the story here. After high school, I was given a scholarship for a combination of athletics and academics. Uh, <clears throat> he says, F you, first grade teacher. How about that? They all treat you like you were the dumb kid, and you weren't dumb. You just you didn't really have a whole lot of family background helping you out, and you were behind. And you got a uh, scholarship. That's wonderful. Success is the best revenge, guys. Trust me. <clears throat> in college, I spent my freshman year trying to figure out why everyone else knew stuff I didn't, but one day I was in the gym shooting hoops when this stunning goddess walked in. Her name was Debbie, and she was the bomb. Well, already you can see where there's a problem, because he's he sees this pretty girl walk in, and all of a sudden she's a goddess. You know, Aphrodite walked in the room, everybody kiss her ass. <clears throat> Debbie was a gymnast. <clears throat> and that body was something else, and she was pretty too. Every guy in the gym stopped what they were doing and watched her. Yeah, gee, I'm sure she didn't notice that, and I'm sure that didn't go to her head. I thought I didn't have a chance, so, so here I am just going to keep shooting hoops when my mind was blown. Debbie came to me and asked if she could join me, still thinking I didn't have a chance. I said sure, and was somewhat indifferent. I left the gym without giving it much thought. A few days later, she called my name from across the campus, and I thought, hmm, this is weird. She ran across the grassy area and held my hand and then asked me if I could give her a ride home. I think she's looking for more than a ride home. My mouth went dry, but I said yes and thought, that, what's the deal here? Every guy on this campus wants to give you a ride. <laughs> yes, they do. When we got to her place, she asked me to walk her to the door and she laid a kiss on me that I didn't know even existed outside of trashy romance novels. I was stunned and shocked, but was smart enough to accept and cop a feel here and there. Uh, please tell me you did more than just cop a feel here and there. This chick clearly wanted you. As you said, you were there on a scholarship for partially athletics, partially uh, academics. And so obviously you were in shape to carry yourself. She probably noticed you. You just never noticed her noticing you before. And since you weren't chasing after her, for whatever reason, that, that probably caused her to be attracted to you. And you are too, too nervous to say anything. So that came off as indifference, and therefore you were challenged, and here you go. But you should have nailed her, but obviously that didn't happen. He says, lesson number one, this is going to get into all his lessons here. we got 27 lessons, and they're all good ones. He says, lesson number one, indifference makes women nuts and attracts them like magnets. Amen. The next day I spoke with my friend Jackie. Jackie's a chick, guys. I did not have a romantic relationship with Jackie, so obviously she's a chick. So I told her what happened, and she asked for her advice, which she gladly gave. Smack! Well, here's SSM lesson with a smack. Don't ask women for advice about other women. She told me everything a woman wanted and how to land a girl. I took her advice and spent the next year simping hard after this girl. She drifted away and lost, and lost touch with her. So this girl already liked you, was chasing after you, coming after you. Can you take me home? And she's making out with you. You have to do anything. And she was yours. Then you asked this chick Jackie advice how to get girls, and you started being completely different, and you turned this girl off, and that was the end of that. Don't ask women for advice, guys, but other women. Learn from men, men that have experience, men that are good with them. Lesson number two, never take advice from women about women. Well, that was kind of lesson number one. Lesson number three, all women hate weak men who adore them. I've been saying this since day one. He says, after my scholarship ran out, I joined the military. A couple days before I left for boot camp, I saw Debbie at the store. I thought my chance had passed, so I was once again indifferent. I suggested we go get a beer, and afterwards, she vibed me back to her apartment. This led to the most glorious night of my life up to that point. It was addictive as heroin. Yeah, if you got this smoking hot babe, of course. While boot camp, the men and women were separated. However, there were times that we would interact. 
Really? Remember, my social skills were still lacking, and I had a, had what of an f f an attitude. I'm gonna do it and see what happens. So whenever possible, I would just grab one of the ladies at boot camp and go behind a dumpster, vacant room, whatever, and go as far as I could with her. Never had a conversation or asked for names. Never got caught as it made me think I was invisible, nor did I get rejected either. He says, at tech school, I was a student leader because I had previous college and damn. Number four, lesson number four, chicks love men in authority. Yes, that's why a lot of times they're hooking up with their bosses or instructors at their martial arts schools. I've seen that one before in the six years I was in martial arts. Oh my God. And other guys in other areas of authority or, or leadership. I got caught in my room with my with the girls a couple of times and was threatened with losing my leadership role, so I cooled things off until school and was finished. My permanent duty station was near a beach, and I was, was a kid in a candy store with all the candy that was free. My first experience was rather interesting. Me and my friend were went to the base gym, and immediately upon walking in there before me was an exotic goddess. This girl was... Where you are with the goddess shit again? It's just a chick, dude. There's plenty of pretty girls in this world. This goddess shit ain't helping your case. He says, this girl was flawless. And I pointed out to I pointed her out to my friend. He said, go talk to her. I said, no. No way girl that girl's that hot or, or no way girls that hot are bitches. <laughs> well, there's a lot of truth to that. He said if I could just go talk to her, drinks were on him that night, so I agreed. I first turned and said hello, fully expecting rejection. I was stunned by her response. She looked up at me with those gorgeous brown eyes and said hi my name is Shala that's a name I never heard before I well these are fake names I froze my mind went blank my mouth went dry my palms started sweating I said something stupid and did the walk of shame I knew that I'd blown my chance a couple years later Shala and I were at the beach she was married and her husband was sitting in a towel while we were walking a few, few hundred feet from the beach in the water so how'd you run into her all of a sudden Nothing romantic was happening when an undercurrent took Charlotte down. I grabbed her and she grabbed me, and from her husband's perspective, they, we were making out. He got up he got up and left. I apologized to her for what must have looked like to him and offered to talk to him for her. She said, no, I don't think you understand. He knows I used to have a thing for you. I was stunned and thought, well, thanks a lot for telling me now. So she falls in the, the water, the under, undertow. You try to help her out. Looks like you're rolling around making out. He just leaves. He's a pussy. Lesson number five. Yes, there are common traits among both men and women, but be careful about uh, prejudging people. Lesson number six. Women are piss poor communicators. Well, that's the interesting thing. Y yes, they are with us, but women typically understand how, how other women communicate. But just with men and women, it's, just, they, it's like two different fucking languages, you know, and it's amazing. Women don't understand that with men, you need to be direct and to the point and say what you mean. And, and oftentimes when there's something that's in a reasonable way, they, there's something they need or want to give us step-by-step -step instructions, if you get my point. Not hints, speaking innuendos, hoping we figure it out like a bunch of Professor Xavier mind readers. It doesn't work that way. On the other hand, men typically, typically masculine men, are very direct and to the point, And oftentimes that can be a little, oh, oh. He's, he's so abrupt. So they are with us, but with, with each other, they actually can communicate. In between Shell and I, I was at the base nightclub drinking and with some friends, and our waitress was a solid tent. All these tens and goddesses coming across your path. Who are you, fucking Zeus? She was pretty and damn that ass. Oh, my buddies encouraged me to go for it again, and being under the influence slightly, I thought, what the fuck? She bought me a drink, and I asked to borrow her pen. On a napkin, I asked for her phone number. No cell phones back then. And she gave me the napkin back and said, no comment. <laughs> okay. I asked to borrow her pen again and wrote, no comment needed. Just numbers. That's a good way to handle that. She probably laughed and thought, okay, I'll give my number. She gave me her number, and I called her a couple days later. We agreed to an evening walk on the beach. That night, she suggested we get a hotel room, and she paid for it. It was another glorious night. If you remember, everything I knew about SCX came from watching P.O.R.N. at Chuck's house, so I did I did her like a P.O.R.N. store. Um, I don't know how much experience you have, but you have a lot of experience to have. Well, you, you get my point with that one, guys. We spent the next day together and just had fun. Night was approaching and offered to pay for the hotel that night. 
She said she couldn't couldn't because her husband was coming back from deployment the next day and she had to get the house together. There you go. She's married. There's a stereotype, guys. I thought, what, you're married? I can get into big trouble here because your husband outranked me. She promised to handle her husband. Yeah, sure. She was intense and not having a conscience. I thought, what the hell? And for the next year and a half, we had the F-Fest. Smack! Not cool, asshole. Or at least younger you as an asshole. This is a guy whose life is on the line being deployed, and you're banging his wife. Okay, you're just as bad as she is. She would take my wallet and slip me some cash. She cooked for me and was really the perfect girlfriend. Yeah, she's so perfect. Until one day, after a messy, wet, loud O, oh, she said she wanted to divorce her husband and marry me. Uh, no thanks. You can't turn an HOE into a housewife, and if she was disloyal to him, she's going to be disloyal to you. I thought, what? Not going to happen, because if she will cheat with me, she will cheat. she will cheat on me. Our relationship fizzled after that. I did a few hits and runs, but then it was just better to run. Lesson number seven. Military men, the base nightclub is crawling with desperate and dependent wives when you are deployed. Don't get married if you have a job that requires deployment. Any men and men never take another man's girl. Yeah, well, you did, but I'm glad you obviously learned that's not cool. How many stories have I done, guys, about the, the wives? The second the husbands are deployed, they're like, bye. Wedding rings come off, they're off to the bars, and you know the rest. Uh, shortly after our breakup, I learned she was pregnant with another man's baby and her husband divorced her. Well, good. Lesson number eight. Once a cheater, always a cheater. Yes, it's true that when women have a ba high body count, <clears throat> they cannot pair bond, but, but the deeper issue is a lack of moral values, which is why they have a high body count. Things were coming out of a whirlwind after that. Lots of gals coming and going, but I do confess I have a couple regrets. Gianna was another 10. She came from a good, solid American family with conservative values. Her father taught her what a real man was. We went out a few times, and I could not get past first base. Then one day, I said, let's go get a drink and dinner. I took her to a convenience store and got a beer and a hot dog. Well, she wanted your hot dog. She was quite confused. I said that when you get what you get from me, mirrors what I get from you. That was our last date, and I regret my actions to this day. Who cares? She's just one chick. Okay, you kept you kept the, the, the date cheap. She didn't like that. And and she couldn't take your joke. Whatever. Lesson nine. Though rare, though rare, there are still some good women out there. It is extremely rare nowadays, but yes, there are still some I, there are other guys that say, nope, 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 that's it. They're all they're all the devil. I disagree with that, but it's rare. Rare to find gals with traditional values and actually have some fucking integrity and are, are loyal and all that. But I'll, I can't wait to see the comments section. Everybody challenge me on that one. There was Lisa. She was a sweet 19-year-old hottie from Mississippi with a rock-solid body. Well, you forgot to say goddess or a 10. She gave me her V-card and damn, she was excited in the bedroom. Oh well, shit, she was 19. I'm sure you were excited too. Picture a virgin and a P star in the, in the bedroom, if you will. Uh, there were still several gals in the rotation, and I was not mature enough to recognize her value. She's a piece of ass, dude. She's 19. You're young. Her value? Well, you're referring to the good ones. One night, I was with another gal when Lisa knocked on my door, and she was quite shocked and pissed off. The other girl smiled and said, I, said, I have no idea. I hit the trifecta that night. Lesson number 10, you don't know what you have until it's gone. That said, I've heard lots of stories of girls like Lisa that did not turn out well. Then came Sharon. This is, a, this is like <laughs> around the pussy in 80 days. Then came Sharon. She was not quite the looker that I was used to, but, to, but not too bad either. In our discussions, I found out that she had intelligence and wisdom rare for people in their early to mid-20s. She grew up with an alcoholic and drug-addicted father, too, who was even more brutal than mine. Aha, now you got something to bond over, you know? Yeah, you would have grew up quick, and so did she. The kicker was that her skin color was slightly darker than mine. This was not a problem while in the military, but more on that later. <clears throat> something then, something weird happened then. I became less interested in the rotation, and she and I became exclusive. I don't remember who suggested it. Life was good, the bedroom was amazing, and she talked to me into going to church with her for the first time in my life, and, and the inside of me started to change. I was developing a conscience. 
We had a deep conversation of the kind that I had never had before. Okay, so she was different. You came from a similar background. You could bond over that. She had to grow up quick. And so, obviously, she was mature than these other bimbos you were banging. And uh, she was religious. And you started talking about deeper things. So, cool. Uh, lesson 11. There is more to life than just SEX. It's true. Let's be honest, guys. The SEX, the loving, is only a small percentage of the time. Even if you're girlfriend or wife and you're hooking up five days a week, that's still a small percentage of the actual time. Uh, she got out of the military a few months after before me and moved to her hometown, which was a medium-sized Midwest city in the same state that I was from. After she left, I started the rotation again that included Lisa, but obviously did not tell her about that. So you got this gal that actually seems pretty good and you're cheating on her. But this is what you become over time. A friend was moving to, to a new permanent duty station and he did not have much luck with the ladies. So I went to the base and I club and picked up a couple dependent wives. So now you're picking up more married chicks. I thought you said, well, I thought you said don't fucking do that. But obviously you in the past was doing that regularly. Not cool, ma'am. Karma's going to come your way. We left the club for a more private place on the beach. I took one gal, and he took the other. I thought I had better not do this girl because she was an easy pickup, and I had no idea what STD might be waiting for me, so I just got a BJ. We returned the others to find them clothed and talking, and I was determined to get my buddy laid, so I left my girl with him and took the other with me. Got another BJ, and upon returning, found them clothed and talking. I gave up and left. Some men just can't be helped. He goes, lesson number 12, refer to lesson number 7. <clears throat> After I separated from the military, I had no place to go, so I moved to the city where Sharon lived. I was extremely naive and unprepared for the real world. I came to her city with $800 cash, a car, and some clothes. Sharon was the only person I knew, no job, no place to live. Sharon's mom did not like people my color, so I was not allowed to stay in her house. I found a cheap hotel and searched for jobs every day. Oh, that's great. Guess what? If her family's not going to like you because of your skin color, then he, there's going to be problems here. Remember I tell you about a gal's family. But then again, you deserve some shit because of all these married women you're fucking hooking up with back then. Lesson 13. Skin color means absolutely nothing and determines nothing about who you are, but there are people who don't share that point of view. Uh, life was tough for a while, but I finally landed a job that was steady working at a local hospital. Ironically, I was an affirmative action hire because I was the only male they employed and the only person of my skin color. Sharon took a job working third shift in a medical laboratory. I worked the first shift and had a lot of uh, time on my hands and worked with a lot of women. Well, I'm guessing you know what happened next. The rotation began again and I got a little careless. And Sharon would finish her shift and she would come to my apartment while I was getting ready for, my, for work. Jenny, oh, we have a Jenny. I spent that night with me, and I told her that she was, had to leave by 7 a.m., and she agreed. 7 a.m. came around, and she would not leave. I kind of panicked and told her to get the hell out. When I, he goes, woo, I dodged that one that morning. Work became a little awkward after that. Uh, yeah, we got, a, we got a Chad and Tyrone type here. Sounds like Tyrone. Lesson 13, don't date women you work with. No shit. I've been saying that forever. Not sure how, she, how, how, but Sharon found out about my rotation and was not pleased about it at all. Yeah, if, if she is in love with you and being exclusive with you and finds out you're banging all these other women, she has a right to be pissed off, jackass. She told me that her family hates me due to my skin color and that was the straw that broke the camel's back. She needs some time away from me. Um, was it be, really because of her family or because you're cheating on her left and right? Lesson number 14, cheating is wrong no matter, no matter the man or woman. Says the guy that was, that was regularly banging, cheating, banging other married women or cheating on his girlfriend. Lesson 15. When you're in a relationship, you are also in a relationship with her family. Make sure everyone values a lot. All right. That's why you check out her family and see what they're like and all these other things. Sharon and her mom went on a cruise. So I guess you're referring to before, before you broke up. Sharon and her mom went on a cruise and one of the housekeeping staff was making the moves on her. Sharon's mother encouraged it because she needed to get over me, and the housekeeper was the same color. They got engaged while on the ship and used the ring I bought for her as the engagement ring. Well, dude, too bad, because you were cheating on her. When Sharon returned from the cruise, she told me about the housekeeper and that, and that using the ring I gave her made us even. 
I laughed at her and said, you seriously don't see what's going on here, do you? She was confused and asked what I meant. I said, do you really think this guy's in love with you? You are his meal ticket to the States. He saw a vulnerable girl and took advantage of you. So on cruises, you could have housekeepers that aren't women, guys. And you guys been on cruises. You have, I think they're called stewards or whatever. I told this is how this is going to play out. He's going to be sweet and kind, treat like a princess until the wedding, and then it's gonna get hit, the shit's going to hit the fan. I know the culture that he came from, and he is going to knock you up so you'll forever be tied to you, beat you, lie to you, steal from you, cheat on you, then abandon you. She got mad. We never spoke again for years. More to that to come. Number 16, or lesson 16, women crave validation and attention. When they get all, it all, reason goes out the window. Yep. And that craving for the attention and validation doesn't stop you when they're in their fucking 80s. Uh, the rotation began again, but this time it was different. How is it different? They're just different people. My conscience was growing and there were fewer on the rotation. Oh, you sent, you're probably going broke with all these broads. You're, or you, you, you can barely, you probably couldn't pee anymore because your dick was being used so much. One day I met Joanne in the cafeteria. She was pretty, pretty, I told her so. I was 26 and she was 43. A SR relationship soon began and I struggled with it, but damn, she showed me things I didn't even see in the POR in videos, so I continued. So you got yourself your cougar before they were called cougars. One day she told me she was secure enough in our relationship to break up with her boyfriend and be exclusive to me. So you're banging another chick that is in a relationship. Now, were you aware of this? I said, you never told me about the boyfriend and just what the hell do you think is going on here? This is not a relationship and we are not a couple. She vomited at the news and we never spoke again. Yes, she actually vomited. <laughs> okay, you didn't know about the She had a boyfriend here. I took some time off from the ladies for a while. What, for like three days? While to reevaluate my life. I was making pennies and living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, because you were spending all your money on these chicks, dumbass. Should have been putting that money away. Getting women was not hard because if you fulfill their need for validation and attention, they will always be there. The problem was getting rid of them. It seemed to be it seemed the worse I treated a girl, the harder it was to get her to go away. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Lesson 17. Women crave attention and validation. They become addicted to men who treat them like trash and hate the men who treat them well. And I mentioned this yesterday, but because some guy asked me in the Ask SSM about how to deprogram myself being a nice guy. And yes, I said there are women that truly will be attracted to guys that treat them horribly, like complete dog shit. Okay? But that aside, most women don't want to actually be with a guy who's an asshole. It's just the assholes have the masculine traits they're attracted to, like leadership skills, not putting up with their crap, giving them some mystery. You, you guys know what I'm talking about here. And while well, the nice guys, you know, treat them too well and they lose respect for them. But yes, there are ones that treat them like complete scum of the earth because that's what they think they are. And that's, they're turned on by that. It's amazing. And you don't need them, guys. I started to focus on work and took a position as a practice manager in a medical clinic. Uh, Sophie, oh, now we have a Sophie here. Sophie brought patients into the office and I thought, hmm, she's not a 10, but not bad. I waited almost a year before asking her out. Our first date was awkward. I planned to take her to a Chinese place and I had been to before we, before when we got there, we found out that it had shut down. We found a little hole in the wall place and things got even more awkward. She ordered, but refused to eat. If I was looking at her, the first red flag I missed. That night she told me she had a daughter, but I could not meet her until we were committed relationship. Second red flag I missed. She invited me to stay the night, but I agreed, but I told her we were not going to have SEX, and we didn't. You, you actually said we're not going to have the SEX. Is this your conscience? So now you're involved with a single MOM who's immediately making rules. Oh, how fun. It says, Lesson 18, do not ignore red flags. Well, I'm going to add to that. Lesson 18 plus, look, dig for red flags. You have to nowadays, gentlemen. We continued to date, and eventually the rotation went away. We became exclusive only to find out that her daughter was a little effing monster. Sophie was, on, was of the opinion that disciplining a child stunted their creativity, so you ne never discipline a child. How freaking stupid is that? 
that's that's a lot of the ideas nowadays and you have these little hellions running around you know you know and there's a world difference between correcting your kid and you know doing things that his dad did to him and which is awful you know but uh anyway i told that beat that harming a kid is never right because i knew what it was like that, uh, taking a beating, she said she needed to smack that kid's ass rather than kiss him. Lesson 19, read lesson 18 until it's imprinted on your soul. Lesson 18 was don't ignore the red flags. I was always on the lookout for a way out, but never really looked that hard because being in a relationship with her was easy and convenient. Of course, we entered into an S-word relationship, which I was always uncomfortable with. I started going to a contemporary non-denominational church, but Sophie refused. She grew up with religious parents and said there was no God. Eventually, she went to church with me and was amazed that there were people her age there that actually seemed like they wanted to be there. She did not understand that religion and God are not the same thing. You will never find God in religion, and you will never find religion in God. To help people understand that, that Jesus said to seek God, not religion or denomination. Eventually, Sophie became a believer too, and we continued our sexual relationship. One day she came to me, I was 31 and she was 28, and she told me she was pregnant. I was floored upon hearing the news. I thought she was on the pill, but it wasn't It wasn't worth arguing about because I got her pregnant and had to marry her. Smack! You do not have to marry her just because she's pregnant. Now, let me, let me stop here. This is obviously decades ago. The olden days of probably, let's see, he's in his 60s now that he was 30. So the olden days of the early 90s where depending where you live, that's what you did. But gentlemen, nowadays, if you get her pregnant and you know it's yours after obviously doing the test, it does not mean you need to run off and marry her in spite of what her father says or your father says or something like that because that leads to disaster often. And by the way, notice how he said that she said, I thought she was on the pill. Always wear protection, always dispose of your protection, always provide your own protection. Lesson number 20, beware the nearly 30 single women. In other words, the gals that are on their, close to turning 30 because they're rushing to the altar. They want that ring because they're scared of turning 30. Lesson 21, you have to wrestle with your own mor morality issues, but when you sleep with a woman, there's a lot you are risking. If she gets pregnant and you don't marry her, you and you don't marry her, you got 18 to 22 years of child support ahead of you. Yeah, well, if you do marry her, you still have child support for 18, 22 years, and you have to listen to her annoying ass all that time. And then if you get divorced, which you probably will, then you'll be paying her alimony. So better to not marry her, better yet, better to, if you don't want kids, get a vasectomy, or always wear your goddamn condom, and provide your condom, and dispose of your condom, so then she have your love juice up her, you know what. I decided to suck it up and make the best of it. Oh, how great. We got married and her little monster got worse and continued getting worse until this very day. Anyway, trying to make the best of it, I put all my, my, all, my all into the relationship but stayed away from the monster as much as I could. Remember the monster is her kid that she wouldn't discipline? But there were times I had to step in and that's what started the argument. Lesson number 22. If you're in a relationship with a single MOM, they will treat you well until the wedding ceremony, and that's when it hits the fan. You are last in everything. She will always choose her child's bad behavior over you. The dog and the cat are a higher priority than you. Your job is to sit down, shut up, and pay for everything. How many guys are watching this right now that either presently are involved with a single MOM, are a stepdad, or married to one, and you know what I'm talking about, or you were in the past? Exactly. Everything he said right here. This is why I tell you, gentlemen, if you want families and all that stuff, don't be the white knight. Don't go for the single MOMs. Yes, there are some. I have to say this every fucking time. Otherwise, people are going to lose their shit. There are some that I have known that are cool. Have it together. Don't behave in this way. But at the end of the day, even the good ones still are going to put their kid first. And that kid still, as much as she's cool, could be a little shit fucker to you. And you get the point. So, but anyway, if you want a family, just meet a gal that doesn't have any kids. Uh, my son was born, and I cannot express the emotions that came with that little boy. Congratulations, Dad. My struggles pale in comparison to that little guy. Sophie and I took a class at church on raising kids. I was, it was an awesome class, but it seemed that the things we learned did not apply to the little monster. Your hellion stepdaughter. She could use a little Jesus in her life. Sophie then became a stay-at-home mom, although she swore she would never be a stay-at-home mom or drive a minivan. 
Sure. Minivans. That's early 90s. That's when they were really coming on the scene. A minivan is a big sign that says, This man's balls have been clipped. And if any guys, any of you fathers out there drive minivans, may take offense to that. You know I'm right. Remember the early minivans were like giant dustbusters, dustbuster mobiles. Remember dustbusters? I didn't mind because she would take better care of my son than a babysitter or daycare, plus, plus the cost of them were about the same as what she made at work. Our income took a huge hit one day, so I took a job in sales. Or your income took a huge hit in one day because of the kid. A couple of years later, my daughter was born. Ah, again, congratulations. Then a few years later, another daughter, and a few years, another daughter. So you've had four girls with your wife, four kids? Jesus. Here's his karma, guys. He's going to have the, the player here who's routinely banging married women and all these other gals and cheating and everything like that. Now he has daughters. And would it be interesting because these daughters are probably nowadays, I'm guessing, doing the math, probably in their late 20s. Would it be interesting if they, well, I think you all know what I'm thinking here, right? You know, the old joke is you have a son, you only have to worry about one sausage. You have a daughter, you have to worry about a thousand. Nowadays, at 10,000. We stopped after that, so four kids in a 12-year period. Our life was consumed with raising kids. I was working 12 to 14 hours a day, but making decent money. Yeah, that's 12 to 14 hours a day, man. God. I respect you doing what you got to do to take care of your family, but honestly, wouldn't two kids be enough? Our life was rather stagnant for a very long time. She was raising her kids and the little monster. We kept having arguments about the little monster's behavior. Take charge. We cannot leave any of our kids alone with her because she would injure them. Oh, hell no would I allow that. Sophie and I were living separate lives. I was working and she was raising kids and driving a minivan. Obviously, our Essex life took a major hit, but neither of us cheated. Really? All of a sudden, you're Mr. Morality? Sophie and I were less than roommates, and she began criticizing literally everything I did. Ah, the bitchy housewife. I couldn't even chew my own food to her standards. She blamed me for everything. That's because she's miserable. Okay? And obviously, you make her miserable, whatever you were doing at the time. I could not I couldn't do anything right. I did, did well in sales, got promotions, was making nearly 150 k per year, but in her eyes, I was dirt. Well, but you could because you were no longer the guy that she first met. You're now you're now the dad who takes turn with her driving the minivan and you're no longer the bad boy and all that. Isn't that interesting? Can't make him happy. You're busting your ass and 150k, <coughs> I'm guessing I'm guessing you're talking about the 90s or maybe the early 2000s at this point. That's pretty damn good. Hell, 150k is nice now. But back then, yeah. But she ain't happy. Shocker. She didn't mind the expensive vacations we went on for a week each year, but the fact remained that she was once again a single MOM. Lesson 23, women, children, and dogs are the only things loved unconditionally. Well, I love my cats unconditionally. No matter, no matter the bitching and complaining a woman do, women do, men have a much harder life than a woman will ever have. Except for the caring and child and childbirth. Yes, I agree. You're expected to be on your purpose, bringing home the bacon, taking care of business at home, doing all the man stuff. You are never allowed to get tired, and you are never allowed to say no. She doesn't give a flip about what you think. If she asks for your opinion, it's a test. She just wants to see if you will say what she already has decided. Well, that is the mindset. Well, a lot of what you're saying is accurate, but there's a difference between the guy that puts up with that shit and there's a guy that doesn't put up with that shit, you know? And clearly, I think you were so worn down, you were putting up with that shit, That's, you know? And yeah, you're expected to bring home the bacon. You're expected to do this, this, and this. And, and any sign of weakness, and yet now you have the era of men, we want men to be soft and cry and all these other things, and, and she can do everything. Well, how well is that working out? But this extreme, it doesn't work out either. And this is why so many guys who watch my channel say, I'm not getting married. I'm not subjecting myself to this misery. Fuck that. But if a man is, no matter how worn down he gets, lays down the law, commands respect, he's not going to have this shit. You were just worn down, my man. This is your karma for a lot of the fucking sleazy shit you did when you were younger. I'm convinced of it. I know you learned your lesson and you're not that way now, but you got to admit, I mean, you were a fucking scumbag when you were younger, banging married chicks and 
cheating on those girls left and right. We continue drifting and for the first year start arguing about stupid things that did not involve that the monster. For example, I yelled at the dog for eating out of the cat litter box. Ugh. And then started the next and I started the next argument. I told her how stupid the argument was and to just calm down. She took the kids and stayed with her mom for three days. They were the first three days of peace I had in years. Maybe she'd get in fights with her more often, she'll, she'll fucking leave and take the kids. I did use those three days to examine my life. I was missing out on a lot of things with my kids, so I just took a job with less pressure and stress, but also paid a lot less. This did not help our marriage, and our financial situation took a hit, but it did help with my relationship with my daughters. My son had already moved out on his own, and I've tried for years to repair the relationship. Uh, great progress has been made, but I will never be where I want to be. So, you have a bad relationship with your son. That's too bad. Lesson 24, you never get a second chance at raising your kids. Do whatever you have to do to make it whatever sacrifice needed to be there. Well, I'm not a parent, so, you know, I don't have that experience, but I was a child once and I know plenty of people with kids and family and friends and I get the part making sacrifices that are necessary but I don't get the part when fathers or parents make sacrifices that harm them and it ends up making them unhappy and spoiling the kids or something like that so it depends what you mean it was then that I got a call from Sharon oh Sharon's back in the picture she found me online and got my phone number from my website your website. We chatted for a while, she, catching up, and then she dropped the bomb. She said that everything I told her would happen did happen. She married the guy from the cruise ship, got knocked up, he hurt her, stole from her, cheated on her, lied to her, and then we had a citizenship. When he got citizenship, he bailed. She apologized and asked if we could talk about getting back together. Um, does she know you're married? But married and miserable. I was not even tempted a little bit. I said that I would not bail on my family for anyone. Well, you learned. Now, your wife is a miserable a-hole, so you certainly have a right to end it with her, and you know, but you got all those kids, it's going to be a mess. I didn't uh, hear from her for a year or so until one day she called me again and invited me to, to lunch to talk. Oh, and by the way, gentlemen, they always come back, what I tell you. Now, yes, he could, he honestly, at this point, he's so miserable with his wife, he should divorce her and raise his kids from where he lives. But it would cost him. But he shouldn't just divorce his his wife, who he's miserable with, just for this broad. He should do it cause, so he can be happy, alone or with some other broad. Once again, she wanted to get back together. Once again, I declined. Now we text each other on our birthdays. They always come back and think that you are the same guy they left. Yep. Fast forward to two years ago, I was doing everything I possibly could not to be in the same room with my wife. Why the fuck are you still married to her if you're this miserable, dude? Is, is this the religion coming in? No offense to you religious guys, but I think you know what I mean. She pretty much stayed on the second floor and me on the first floor. We did not sleep in the same room and had not had SCX in three years. We only uh, had one child still at home. Sophie and I got into another argument where we talked about getting divorced after our youngest was out of the house, and I was really okay with that. That night, I said to God, Okay, God, for years I've now been asking you to change my wife, and you haven't done anything. Rarely did I ask him to, do, to change me, so I, get, I give up. It's on you now. You say that you don't approve a divorce, I'm done, and the ball's in your court. About time, my man. But this is, I'm telling you, this is your karma. Karma always comes back to bite you in the ass. This is your karma for all the shit you did when you were younger. Lesson 25. Sometimes the problem is stubbornness and lack of personal accountability. The next day, my youngest daughter was out of town for a sporting event. So Sophie and I went to some yard sales. A thought popped in my head that, that said, hold her hand, and I said, okay. I held her hand, and she accepted. We had a nice day. We got lunch, and my daughter's sporting event was stream streamed live on YouTube, so we watched sitting beside each other with arm in, around her. Since my daughter would be away the weekend, we had the amazing SEX that night, and afterwards, she so sobbed harder than I thought she ever had before, and of course, I didn't know why. I thought a cheating confession was coming. Hmm. When she, when she calmed down, she told me that, that today was the day she had dreamed about for nearly 20 years. And over that time, I was the only man she ever loved, and at no point did she ever consider cheating. No, here's, here's what I think is going on. All the kids are out of the house. She knows you. She's thinking, oh shit, after years of being a miserable a-hole to this guy, and no SEX, 
it's just the two of us. I better get my act together quick and hold his hand and give him amazing SEX and cry and all that stuff because now he'll leave me. That's what I think. But I'm a cynical fuck. That was two years ago and I can't imagine a more fulfilling life than the one I have now. Okay. She says, I'm sorry. I was wrong and you were right. This lily has never happened before in our marriage. Our intimate life in the bedroom exceeded my expectations every time. Well, bro, if you're happy, fine, okay. But I don't think it's an accident. I don't think anybody watching this at this point in this long fucking video is going to think it's an accident that all of a sudden she became sweet and amazing and wonderful when all the kids are out of the house. Not because the kids are out of the house and it's quiet, but because now she knows you that you could pick up and leave. That's what I think. Remember, when women are fearful that a guy will leave or they know that he'll take off, they, they push him too far, they're going to get their act together. I just don't, I don't buy this. Lesson 26, never let pride get in the way of your happiness, but refer back to lesson 18 every day. Lesson 27, always call a woman or BS immediately. Don't wait 20 years. Duh. It would have been a lot different, my man, for 20 years if you would have had the balls you had when you were younger. You got worn down. You got pee whipped. In conclusion, our story here. So, about the little monster. She's now in her 30s and lives almost three hours away. She's got three bills. She has a degree in, a degree in women's studies that cost her $100,000. She is swings bats for the other team. Speaking in code here. Teaches queer theory at a local college. And is the most bitter and unhappy person I ever met. Does she have blue hair and tattoos? White men are the cause of every trouble in the history of mankind. And she has burned every relationship bridge she's had in her life. When she's around, I pretend she ain't. The end. So what a surprise. The little hellspawn daughter who the mother would never discipline and all that. Is a miserable, miserable as fuck. Broke. Major in women's studies and you know, you know all that. You know, I mean, if she bats for the other team, that's fine. That's your business. I got no problem with that. The problem is she's a fucking asshole. So anyhow, guys, at the end of this long story here, these are all these life lessons he's learned over his journey. Did our guy here make a shitload of mistakes when he was younger that I disagree with and disapprove of? Yes, banging knowingly banging married women, guys with girlfriends, cheating on his girlfriends that thought that they were the only one. That it wasn't cool. But it sounds like the guy obviously has learned his lesson. And he got some karma for 20 miserable years with his wife. He's happy now with her. And so, you know what? Great. But I hope you remember that lesson you said at the end about uh, you check them. And don't wait 20 years to do that. But I'm still convinced that, bro, your wife, because she knew the kids were out of the house and you could leave. You Seriously. But maybe I'm wrong. I'm usually I'm not wrong, but I hope I hope maybe I am, or at the very least I hope you're happy. So I wish you all the best, man. So guys, lots of lessons in this long ass story here, and it backs up the things I talk about. So take this as you will as we're approaching the holidays. We're about to have a new year in about a week, and uh, you guys can that are new can hopefully take these lessons you learn from all these stories and start applying them to your life, not just relationships but also to other areas of your life to help you out. So, sir, I appreciate you sending the story. It was definitely entertaining. You made your mistakes, but they were younger you. Younger you was a jackass, but you've learned. You paid your dues, and I really hope the next period of your life goes well and that things are good with your kids and all that. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let this guy know what you think. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.